if you want to get to the glory land, you can't be afraid to ask for help. That just won't work. I don't have time to waste, neither should you. We're busy. It's a whole new year. My money matters. I don't know what yours. <laughs>
winning in the pandemic so if you're definitely looking for a more of a fixer upper this is the perfect time for it now the main reason for me i did look at distressed properties i looked at already built homes and stuff like that but my main issue in that why i decided to purchase a property first and build was because i couldn't find anything that i liked <laughs> i um what they call bougie and i have a particular taste and i just don't feel like settling when it comes to bricks and stones and if i look at a home and i don't see myself living in it i am not going to purchase it or if i find if i feel like this home isn't where i'm trying to be in the next five to ten years miss me with that so the reason why i picked a property was because i wanted to build something that was uniquely for me and my taste because it's up there <laughs> you might just be like girl if i just get a roof and some floor i'm straight so definitely if you are that type of person i just need a roof and a floor and i can adjust definitely look into buying a ready to move in home versus doing what i'm doing because now that i have the property of course i'm looking at like contractors and architects and getting the process started for that so my work is not done the work is never finished okay so before i answer anything else i'm going to just explain the entire process the first step you should do is save for your deposit so that's going to be about 10 percent of the property value i lied the first step you should do when you are looking to buy your first property is go to the bank or you can go to a credit union what i did was i definitely looked around and i just assessed the rates and the mortgage rates also sometimes banks have campaigns like um where they have like fixed rates on the mortgages if you sign them in a certain time so i definitely looked around and went with the bank that worked best for me once i decided like this is the bank that i want my mortgage to be with then i met with a mortgage loan officer who i sat with glorious lunch break and she told me how much i qualify for at the current salary that i have right now she also told me all of the things i would need to submit to her to get pre-approved for any mortgage that I was looking at. I know like in different countries, a pre-approval letter and stuff like that might be given and stuff. It wasn't so much as a letter I received. It was just like a, hey, you have everything in right now. You have like all of your personal information. You have how much you qualify for, maybe a job letter. You have all the information right now. So all we would need is the next step, which would be the offer letter and stuff like that. That's the stage that I wanted to get to before I started looking at all. Just getting the process of like being quote unquote pre-approved by the bank so I can get started and actually look for a property that I liked. So the first step, go into the bank. You ooh, go in. I don't like that pandemic. Call the bank and ask to speak to a mortgage loan officer. Call a mortgage loan officer or set up an email conversation with a mortgage loan officer just figuring out how much you qualify for. And the important thing is, when you figure out how much you qualify for, save at least 10% of that amount. Let's say I'm looking at a property around $100,000. My savings goal for my deposit will be at the very minimum $10,000. That's how much you need. $10,000 to actually get started. And $10,000 is exactly the amount that will most likely be on your offer letter and stuff like that. Sometimes different real estate agents and persons require 5%, but 10% is a good rule of thumb. So once you have your $10,000 ready and stashed away, then I advise you get a real estate agent or you start looking around and you get a good feel for the type of property that you want. This process takes long. I was looking for like maybe a year and a half, really like seriously looking and looking at available properties and stuff for like seriously a year and a half before I found the one. But plot twist. The property that I have, I didn't think I could afford until, like when I was initially looking at properties, I remember I saw the property that I actually have now and I was like, there is no way I can afford that. Please give me something that is cheaper. And I messed up and found something that was cheaper, but then there was an issue with trying to close because um, I had to come up with a certain amount of money and the vendor who had the property had to come up with a certain amount of money and the vendor wasn't ready. So we had to let that go because I didn't want to be stuck in trying to close a property for two to three years, just waiting on someone to accumulate their funds. And that's just that's just not what I want to do. I don't want to be in limbo because I'm waiting for somebody, especially when we talk about lawyer fees and stuff like that. Try not to be in limbo because that costs a lot of money. While I was messing up, I was still saving. So then I was able to actually afford a deposit on the property that I actually have now.
which is pretty cool. So always, always save. That is my number one tip. If you are trying to buy a home, you should be saving every single month. Let me know. I am happy to do a budget video because I'm a big budget type of person. My money matters. I don't know what yours, but I believe in budgets and I believe in saying like, this is how much money is going into my savings. This is how much money I've spent on Wendy's and Popeyes. I need to know that. And then this is how much money I'm using to pay off my credit card. I like to see where my money goes. So at the end of the month, I'm not like too confused. Like I am just waiting on the next paycheck where all my money go. I don't like to have those conversations with myself. They never go well. So <laughs> having a budget and constantly saving every month really has helped me a lot. So once I have my deposit, I meet with my real estate agent, then find a property that I like. Once I find a property that I like, me and my agent will do an offer letter. We will sign that bad boy, send it over to their, to the vendor or the vendor's lawyer, letting them know like, hey, you have an offer on this property. They might counter, which they always do. So I always, I always shoot low, which is why I love my real estate agent because you should have a really good agent who will negotiate on your behalf and tell you like, hey, the property is listed for 100, but if you push, you might be able to get it for 90. These numbers matter because if you're able to save $10,000 on a property, that helps. <laughs> Every little bit helps. Once you guys agree on an amount, you guys will both sign on it. And then that goes to the bank who will actually get started on preparing your loan and stuff like that. Once that sits at the bank level, the bank will let you know if you need any additional information, if you need any additional funds. Also, then the offer letter goes not only just to the bank, the offer letter also goes to your lawyer. So you find a lawyer, find somebody who can prepare up conveyances and do title searches and all those good things on your behalf because that's what they're for. So lawyer usually gives you a quote of how much it will be charged to close this property that's called your closing cost, inclusive of the lawyer fees. The closing cost might also be the equivalent of 10% of your property value, which is fine because you already saved that 10%. So you're working on saving the next 10%. The lawyer will communicate with the vendor's lawyer and actually start drafting up the documents. Also your bank's moving on your behalf and making sure that your mortgage is ready. Your bank is in communication with your lawyer. So your lawyer, your bank, and your real estate agent are all sort of interconnected. It is very advantageous when all three of them have some sort of relationship together, but it's not always necessary because money talks. <laughs> and definitely have conversations with these people. If you have a conversation with them and their vibe is off, or you feel as though you're being ripped off or scammed, clear indication that that clearly isn't for you and maybe you should look for someone else. Because that happened to me a few times. You know, just feed off of people's energies. You gotta be able to sense the vibe and be like, I don't think you are my best interest at heart. After all the processes are done, the lawyer will call you in, ask you to sign a few documents, you know, that conveyance, the mortgage conveyance, which basically says that that property is yours. Also at the bank, you'll sign a few documents, you'll sign your mortgage agreement and stuff like that. And I feel like when you really sign at the lawyer on the bank, that starts to kick in. You decided on like the first mortgage payment, which makes it real real if you want if there's anything that you want me to go in more detail on definitely leave a comment down below like this video that definitely lets me know that this content was helpful for you but i'm pouring out my entire soul and i really hope you guys enjoyed it so real quick i will just spit fire on some of the other questions you guys asked so here we go So the difference is when you work with a real estate agent, obviously that person gets a commission, but they have access, they have access to a lot more properties that you might not have access to on your own versus looking in like the newspapers or classified or online. Private um, deals are always best, right? Because you're dealing with one person, with one human with money to another human with the property and that's an easier exchange, less commissions, kind of like less work, so to say. But with dealing with a real estate agent, for me, I I actually prefer dealing with a real estate agent. So the real estate agent that I worked with in the end, she was very good. So what we did before the pandemic was that we spent an entire day driving around the island looking for properties and stuff like that. She gave me three options that were in my budget and we were able to decide on something within that week, end of that week, I was able to put in an offer on the lot that I wanted. So I told her exactly what I was looking for. like. If I can find a home, we'll move in. I doubt it. But if you can find it, definitely I'll see it. 
But right now, I'm leaning on just finding a property that's within my price range. I had so many issues finding a decent real estate agent. I probably dealt with maybe two or three before finding the one that actually made sense to me. I had one time I was supposed to look at a property and the real estate agent was like on a plane and we booked the time to see it. And he was like, I am on a flight. I feel like with real estate agents, you really have to find who's worth your time and who isn't because at the end of the day, they are getting commission. So I really feel like if you are getting a piece of the value of this property, I would act like it. I don't know what you. I did switch lawyers halfway through. Best decision ever because then my new lawyer had lower fees than the previous lawyer, thank God. And then I did, no, I kept the same mortgage loan officer through and through. No, I didn't. I had, I switched mortgage loan officers as well because I had a better relationship with my mortgage loan officer who I'm with now. So I switched lawyers, I switched real estate agents, and I switched mortgage loan officers, and I switched all of them for the better. So be mindful of that. Definitely don't work with people, in my opinion, who you can't even tell if they have your best interest at heart. That's not ideal. Um, I started saving from 2017. I didn't really start looking at properties and stuff like that until 2018. And then I was able to close end of 2020. So I would say I was more so deep in the process for about two years. But that was on me because, like I said, I was going to acquire a property that um, wasn't in my best interest. So I had to pull out of that deal and start looking for a new deal, which I, I, I put in an offer letter on the property in March of 2020. And I was able to close by December of 2020. I think I could have closed quicker if we weren't in quarantine because, you know, when you're in quarantine, then the offices at the government um, and the public treasury and the registrar and stuff like that, they actually closed for a period of time. So that caused a huge delay in when we were able to do it. Okay, so all in all, the property I was able to, the property I have now I was able to close in under a year, probably about nine months, which is really good. That's ideal. All right, so I got a question on rent to own and I did look into it, but there was only like a few companies that actually did it. And when I looked at the mortgage rate, the interest rate and the um, amount of money I would be paying for rent slash mortgage payment, I was like, nah, I might as well just get something on my own. So I did look at it and it just wasn't a good fit for me and what I wanted. For me, rent to own is just honestly you paying rent and then some. So I wasn't into that initially and I still probably am not into it. So it's just a hard pass for me. The different type of mortgages, it really depends on your bank and the rules that they set. For example, I know that when you purchase, when you purchase just property or land, that's definitely 15 years. Um, but if you actually purchase like a home, then you can reach that 20 to 30 year mortgage line. So the rates and the years definitely change depending on what you're looking for. Obviously, if you get a property first, you can always go back to the bank and refinance it when you do decide to build on it or build your home. The struggles of real estate, um, there are a bunch of them. So depending on where you live, there might be certain incentives that the government offers to allow you to proceed, to allow you to pursue home ownership a lot quicker. Definitely look into those. That will be dependent on your state, your province, your island, all that good stuff. So please, please, please do your research before you go in and privatize yourself. For me personally, in the Bahamas, we had, there are like certain lots that are government owned that they give to um, young homeowners to start. But there is a certain amount that you have to qualify for. And I was over, in terms of your salary, you have to make a certain amount in order to qualify for those lots, which are given at a very, very discounted rate. And I didn't meet the qualifications, so I wasn't able to get that discounted lot. So I had to go um, the route I went. But definitely look into it. I know the UK um, does some things as well. Do your research. Do your research. Google is the biggest help ever. Look into the different incentives that each country offers. It might always work for your favor, but at least you know. So the last thing would be, what, what would I have done differently? I took out a small loan to pay for my closing costs because I did not have all that money at the time. So I thought it'd be best in my best interest to take out a small loan to cover all of the closing costs. Also, what sucked for me was because I did it in a pandemic, I think my lawyer fees increased. 
it took more time with the pandemic and things closing and opening and just the fluctuations in like business it took time for my lawyer to actually track down everybody and get everything moving so i mean it's understandable that my lawyer fees would have increased but i didn't plan for it so that's what i would have done differently to have some just in case money so only thing i would have done differently really is save 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 <laughs> but that is really everything that i did to buy my first property at home um, definitely it was a little bit of research on my part and networking which I talked about in a previous video working with who I had talking to friends who had properties before in the process and just asking them for help and support if you want to get to the glory land you can't be afraid to ask for help that just won't work so definitely ask your questions do your research on your own so you can be in an even better position than I was but it's definitely possible I believe in you if you don't believe in yourself I believe in you and you'll get it done but that is the whole truth the whole tea on how to buy your first property or home in 2021 i wish you all the best i'm rooting for you and be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful drop a comment down below share with someone who needs it and i'll see y'all in the next one bye